into a little bit of a homemade tutorial on how to use Pix4D Mapper to be able to stitch your drone imaging to form an ortho mosaic that then you can use later for data segmentation and extraction um, in your process for your remote sensing trials. So we find ourselves here on the Pix4D Mapper homepage. This is assuming you've already downloaded Pix4D Mapper. And we're going to start a new project here. So you can give your file a name. Now you can choose where this is going to be deposited. Add in here. For me, and this will just, this will be the destination for all of your data uh, that is generated in this stitching process. So that includes the orthomosaics for all bands that were recorded, in addition to your digital surface and digital terrain models. So now that we have our folder in place, we're going to start our new project. As it's selected there, we need our images. So uh, from here, go to Add Images and find, uh, go to the destination where you have your images recorded from your drone flights. And for me, it's in one of my removable hard drives here. I'm going to go into Sicer. And after you've gone through and recorded, you want to make sure that you have um, some images in here from your calibrated reflectance panel. So that will help um, the stitching process adjust for what I believe is the light quality. So I've selected all the images that the drone recorded. I want to hit open. All of them will be loaded into there. We're just going to hit next. All right, now all of our images have been loaded and we can then move on to these next steps here. Not a lot to look at at this step. We're going to move to the next here. Our, this is just our coordinate system. Where that we're just going to use auto detected for the moment. And for my processing options, I want to use AG multispectral just for the project that I am working on. And this might take a little bit longer, but I'm in no rush here. So that's helpful for me to get that high quality. So we're going to hit finish. Now this brings you to the processing steps. Now, before we hit that first step of processing, I'm just going to strip these out. We're only going to do the first step because first we're going to just load our GCP coordinates. Those, those are for our ground control points. And mine are in a text file in XYZ format. So I have those in my documents here. Going into field info, Sicer GCP coordinates. There. And so those bring them in. These are your longitude, latitude, altitude from here. And then they have just zero through four as the, or zero through three as the labels. But mine are just based on the corners. So we have the southwest, northwest, northeast, and southeast corners. For my material, I'm going to click OK. So that what you're seeing here now is within the flight path of the drone where those GCP coordinates are situated. Now we're not going to run steps two and three until we manually locate where those ground control points are and then we'll move on to those next steps. So now that we have our GCP coordinates and our images loaded for our project, we're going to hit start for that first step of processing. So after you've completed the first step of processing, that step one initial processing, we're going to move on to build the point cloud and mesh and um, digital surface model, orthomosaic and indexes in step three. So this is assuming that you have built 
your or inserted the coordinates for your ground control points prior to starting step one. Now, the next step that you'll be moving into is to mark the location of your ground control points in each image. And so with that, you're gonna go back to the GCP MTP manager under projects. And you can see that I uploaded all of my ground control points previously, and I labeled them according to whether they were on the Northeast, Northwest, Southeast or Southwest corners of my trial. And then I'm going into the Ray Cloud Editor after this. So after I press Ray Cloud Editor, that will open up this pane here where you will see all of the options for each of our GCPs that we label. And as you can see, I've already labeled some of the Southwest and the Northwest. And these numbers here indicate how many tie points I've been able to create. So that is uh, pictures that I've been able to tag the location of the ground control point. Now we're going to start with the northeast because as you can see we have zero tie points. Okay and so prior to doing this it's important to know what each of your ground control points look like and so on my phone I have some photos that I took of all of the ground control points out in the field just so I have them as a reference for when I am making tie points. So now to tag them, you scroll into whatever is acceptable to, as the center point for you. Click there and you'll have this yellow circle show up. And that will be then the location of your ground control point. And as you see, as we start to make more, it'll start to predict the location in the pictures itself. See, I haven't clicked on this one yet. But there's still this green point of where the computer is predicting it is. So after you have about four or five points that are marked, you can use this automatic marking feature. And what this will do is based on the coordinates uh, on the images that you clicked on, it will go ahead and mark some of these automatically. And what you're seeing here though, sometimes it doesn't get it perfect. So in the instances that you don't have, um, it's not getting it right on the center of that GCP, just simply click on that green X that you see on the image and drag it to the point that you want. And the you'll be able to fully move this or, or uh, yellow circle and cross that shows up. And then the uh, green X is more of a moving average, I guess, in the location. So. As we're seeing now, we're a little bit off, but every time we readjust the location of our circle and cross, this yellow, we'll get a little bit closer with those predicted green X's. And so with now, as we're marking this location and just getting it as accurate as possible, we're slowly increasing the number of tie points that we have. And you'll do this until you scroll through all of these, uh, and mark them. And as you can see, there's quite a number of them in this trial. Uh, part of that might be I had quite a high degree of overlap in them, and and so there should be multiple images with that that we see our ground control points. So and once you get to the end and you see that you're no longer finding um, images that have your ground control points in them, you can hit apply, and that will show then how many tie points you have up there and then you move on to your next ground control point. All right, now that we have tagged all of our ground control points or GCPs, you'll see them down here. I have four around on each of the four corners of my trial and the numbers beside them again, like I mentioned in the previous snippet, that indicates how many pictures we found the location of the GCP in. We're gonna to move to the next steps of processing now. And so first off, I wanna uncheck initial processing because that's done, because it's in green. And we're gonna do those last two steps there. First, we're gonna check into output status to make sure that we have everything um, set up for what we need here. So 
for my uh, processing, I want the point cloud densification, point density to be high. I'm not in a rush. Uh, I want to classify the point cloud. And in my format of the point cloud, I want it to be an X, Y, Z. That's the same format as my ground control points were uploaded into. Uh, for my needs, I'm not changing much within uh, the 3D textured mesh. I think, you know, one point where you could move it into the high resolution there. Now I'm moving into the digital surface model and ortho mosaic generation. For mine, I want to uh, use noise filtering and surface smoothing on for my material here. I want to generate a raster DSM in a GeoTIFF. Merge those, ortho mosaic. I would also like that in a GeoTIFF because I need it for more processing. Merge tiles, and I want that in a. For my needs, I don't think I need it in a GeoTIFF without transparency. Additional outputs a grid DSM in XYZ is just to have that regular formatting from there. Raster DTM. I want that in a GeoTIFF as well. And then finally, uploading uh, the contour lines as a PDF, just as a nice, easy file format to deal with. After that, you click OK. And that will show now that I have 16 steps based on what I clicked to accomplish. And bada bing, bada boom, start that off. And it will work its way through those 16 steps. So that gets you to. Uh, be able to set up the second and third parts of image processing in PIC 4D. Once your steps two and three of stitching your ortho mosaic and putting together your point cloud are complete, you'll be able to see whether those steps are finished by looking through uh, the output status. And if you have check marks over all the areas that you wanted complete, these sections are done. So next steps, and the final ones you want to use in PIX4D, are go to your index calculator, and you want to see if your reflectance map first has been generated, and then you're going to move to your index maps. And so, Based on your camera, you will have the base index indices that were recorded. And for my camera, using a Microsense Red Edge MX, I had five bands that were recorded, blue through Red Edge. NDVI has just been added on. And as you can see, so if I select blue, I have a check mark beside it. That means that I have already generated that index map. But for something, say, like red, you can see that there is no check mark, and we have the base color of the ortho mosaic. So for this part, I want to generate it. So I'm going to select that index, and then click generate. And you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner, there'll be a process that will go along from here. And so that'll finish off. And now that you can see once this has been generated, the colors change and we get our little check mark. And so we can move on to our next indices as well. And sorry about that. Hit generate and the same process will undergo. And so that is how we're going to generate our index maps. And these will be the final steps of processing, at least for this um, in PIX4D. And the next steps will be to move the ortho mosaics into ArcGIS Mapper for segmentation and extraction. All right, to wrap up this video, I will just show you in the end where you can find your ortho mosaics and the digital surface model to use uh, once you've completed the stitching steps that we've seen in this video and to move on to segmenting. So here I have my project, September 4th, Sicer Milk Vetch. And if I want to go find the DSM and ortho mosaics, the digital surface model, we're going to go on DSM ortho. Here in DSM is where we're going to be able to find our digital surface model in this TIFF file, the GeoTIFF. 
and then our mosaics are found in here. And as you can see, we have five blue, green, near infrared, red edge, and red light that came from my MicaSense Red Edge MX sensors. So if you want to see how we are going to use these, feel free to tune in to my next video. Thanks for listening in.